Hey guys, Jamie with Townhouse here, about to teach you guys how to grow your agency online with the Online Prosperity Show. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got none other than Jamie. Jamie, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me online tonight. Not a problem. Well, for starters, it's a Friday and I'm sorry, I'm not going to keep you long from your Friday drinks. But <laughs> please do, please do. viewers, you might be watching this on a Sunday, so don't go up and crack open a beer. Jamie here has been the founder of Mark, Mark Titans Agency. And they enable service providers to effortlessly find their clients with automated content marketing that actually allows them to serve and focus on what they do best. Now, did I say that right, uh, Jamie? That is correct. That is correct. Spot on. Great stuff. Now, Jamie, just a really quick one. Content marketing. I hear content is king. What's your two words just about why people should use content marketing in anything they're doing with their marketing? Two words only or... <laughs> yes i think um content should be all about giving a giving a tangible outcome to the prospect so a lot of entrepreneurs and companies tend to f focus their content plans around getting interaction and you know growing their online presence and that is good but the outcome of producing good content should be to help the prospect to prove to the prospect that Yes, you know how to help them and yes, you can help them very quickly. And when a prospect consumes content and they get a result in advance from the company producing the content, then that prospect is then more, is then more inclined to hire that company. So when you're putting out content, ensure that you're not just throwing out content just for the sake of putting out content, but Almost try to put out content so that your prospects do not have to come to you, if that makes sense. So put out content that achieves a tangible outcome from the prospect and that turns them from just someone consuming your articles or your clips or your content to someone who you've now helped out and now they're more inclined to hire you in the future. Okay. Well, pretty much that's about it. And the more content they consume, they get to know, like, and trust you, which then helps them... Um, eventually do business with you. Correct. Now, okay. Could you walk us through a scenario when somebody inquires to work with you? What sort of steps do you walk them through and how do you then provide that outcome that you've just explained to us there, Jamie? Um, yeah. yeah. Well, pretty much dependent on the actual client and where they've come through, they usually end up on a call with me and we look at qualifying them as a client. And it's not your hard qualifying it is more or less trying to predict if we can help them to, to 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 get a really good return on the purchase so we look at their clients we look at their price lines, we look at their current conversion rates how much they're spending on advertising how large their email list is and we look at the whole client company to figure out okay is can can our agency and then can our team help to really grow that that client quite quite quickly and then if we can then we begin to put them through our process where we you know help them to then create the the content the email campaigns the advertising campaigns all the automations and all, all the systems that we sell from our company and we begin to de deploy that into the client's company as sort of quickly as we can for them great stuff all right so our viewers are people that are normally uh, starting a digital marketing agency and they mm -hmm. really want to build from me, usually starting from scratch. Okay. Yeah. We'll start it somewhere. All right. Now yes. walk, us, walk us through maybe some of the things that you went through that then got you to where you are right now. That might be a little bit broad, but just <laughs> a, few, yeah. a bit of a timeline of how you started and just so that somebody who's, starting now knows that they too can be where you've been and um, you know, sort, sort of get some motivation. Sure, sure. Well, it's quite interesting. So my first agency was a design agency. So we began in graphic, websites and also video. 
editing. And then from there, I launched a different company, which was a clothing line. We might talk about that in the future later. However, so I had these, had, so I had these two companies going. And then the third company was my training brand where I train other entrepreneurs to do what I do pretty much. And that was the first six years of my career. And the last two years has been really about growing this agency now, growing Market Titans agency. And the process for that has been a lot easier and a lot quicker because of the previous six years. So over the first six years, I probably didn't do anything as correct as I should have. However, over the last two years, what I can you know really offer to your audience is to look at solving a single particular need and treat your company and your agency like a product line. So, sorry, like a production line. Okay, so a lot of agencies tend to do customized work where they might do a customized SEO campaign and a special ad campaign and that makes perfect sense because every client needs different solutions. However, if you're only targeting a single type of client with a single problem, then you can offer a single solution. And that allows you to then close clients quicker while also getting the outcome a lot more quicker for them as well. So look at only, only sort of specializing in, in a single outcome if you can, rather than being greedy and taking on every single client just because there's profit in it. And while that might reward you quickly, over the long term, it is gonna be costly and hard to hard hard to sort of scale because you have to grow, you know, the actual SEO team and then the actual traffic team. And you have to create a different department for each customized client that you have, as opposed to just treating like a production line where you give the give the client a sort of tem, te, te, templated product that is easy for you to produce, which ensures that the client can launch quickly and see a predictable return. So for most agencies, I mean, it kind of depends on what agency you do want to grow. But for us, it is all about ensuring that we can grow quickly and also help our, 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 our clients too as well. So our approach has sort of always been get clients in, serve them quickly and launch them quickly as well. Okay, great stuff. I really like the fact that you mentioned that focus on one single pain or problem mm -hmm. that you can actually help your clients with and specialize in that. Okay. Yes. Now, yes. Yes. Now a lot of um, people that are starting, um, they're told to try out all these other things and at the end of the day they have the shiny object syndrome now yes. have you ever gone through that or if you did how did you overcome that to now then come to focusing like you you are at the moment i think it's just a process i think you have to figure out what works for you and and i think you do have to go through a lot to learn what your single thing is. And you know, there, there, there are times when we do still look at other opportunities and we might jot them down somewhere. So we have them for, for sort of future opportunities, but we don't pursue them. So it's always good to know your, know your outcome and know your objective, right? And, what is a syndrome of sort of chasing a lot of different opportunities is that you don't have a clear end goal. So look, look at your actual end goal and figure out what is the quickest approach to that. And if something isn't working overly well, just be clear that it's usually quicker to correct the actual problem at hand as opposed to launch something else although launching something else might feel easier it will take a lot more time over the long term as well usually you don't have to launch or then change anything it's just about tweaking and solving problems as you go if you look at a lot of good entrepreneurs they really did quite well initially in one company. They had one company first at launch and did really well and they hit it. Then they did, you know, 20 other projects. As a lot of entrepreneurs look for the 20 other projects first. So always look at hitting your home run 
first and then from there if you have the actual capital and the actual time to do so then go pursue other opportunities too great stuff so you did mention that you when you following through a project um you probably just nod it down and follow it up later so mm -hmm. that must mean you've got probably systems and tools that you might recommend um you know people to start using that you might have you know at the tip of your tongue right there yep yep so in terms of capturing ideas and thoughts i just use Evernote. um it's n n nothing complex but i have pages and pages i think i have like you know what? let me tell you because it's it's an absurd amount i have in terms of notebooks i have i think it's uh i can't even tell you actually we have about like 400 different categories of like just and we won't ever open half of them if not all of them ever again but it's just having them there and so they're not consuming your sort of headspace and keep in mind as well this is over the last six years so it's not as much as you would think right so oh. these are like client notes these are possible ideas and and they're all in there and heaven note is a really good platform whereby it allows you to search for keywords so if there's any keyword that we've you know tag a sort of high idea in then we can always get packed to it quite quickly and at least in putting it down somewhere then it's not in your head and that allows you sort of the more capacity to deal with the problems of today while also having that high idea captured as well and you might not ever pursue that thought or that idea or that client or that project, but at least you've stored it somewhere. So if you come across it years down the extra track, then you can say, okay, well, that looks good to then pursue now, or that was a horrible idea. And, and I'm very pleased that we didn't actually implement it. Great. So among those uh, 400 pages of notebooks, uh, notebooks, I don't even know how many pages. It's insane. Of notes that you're going to give me to download a little bit later. <laughs> I would think that, um, you know, some of those are probably strategies that you, you're hoping to implement. How do you then keep up with the whole changing dynamics in this whole digital space and excellent keep on top of things? That's an excellent question. And one that many people get confused with and get lost and slowed down with. What I like to focus on is principles more than tactics. So the tactics will always change as to there might be a new social platform, there might be a new hack and say advertising or anything else, right? The actual tactics change, but the principles remain the exact same. And those principles are getting your brand or your product in front of people who can use it. And when you understand, that from our underlying principle point of view then the tactics can be very flexible you can you know if you look at let's say if you had to organize sales calls with possible new prospects or then you can either do it through email social media PPC, seo content there's many different tactics for that and it's not getting confused in the tactics but it's being conscious of the outcome and knowing the actual principles and in terms of the most important principle that any entrepreneur or any agency can learn, it's the skill of doing really good copywriting. Because if you look through since the 40s, right, the number one skill has always been how do you write good copy? And that worked in offline advertising, then it came to TV, worked really well, then it came to air then it came to the internet and it's like it's it's good copy is what the essential aspect of of hovel marketing and that is a core principle is that how do you effectively communicate your offering to the prospect who needs it who is the most qualified at the right time for the right platform and that's where you can implement different tactics however asking that sort of question clarifies the principle where the tactics become relatively clear so don't get caught up in the tactics because those will always change always get caught up and always get attached to the core underlying principles of what actually drives it forward online for your brand and for your company great stuff so people like me that don't have english as a first language are not going to win with this whole copyright thing right <laughs> depends depends because there's sort of 
different paradigms to copywriting. A lot of the people that I see who are just beginning with copywriting try try to be very flashy with their copywriting, right? And that works to a certain point, but prospects don't care about flashy. And usually if you're doing flashy copywriting, then you're trying to compensate for either a for either a incongruent product or some product which it hasn't been qualified and tested. However, if you have a good product, you know your audience you don't need flashy copy you literally go hey i have this product that helps you to do this would you like it and when there's that perfect connection it's very easy to write very good copy and what i suggest which is a subtle tweak is ensure your copy is prospect driven not product driven many people craft copy around what the product can do around how great they are around their history their testimonials their case studies their experience their track history all of that right however a prospect wants to know that you understand their pain that you can help them to push through that and you know what is important to them so that's we're ensuring that ensuring that your copy is prospect driven not product driven is really crucial and and the change is so small it's just a few words here and there i'll I'll give you a primary example. We used to have a headline on our homepage that said, I think it said something along the phrase of, we generate customers online in any industry. And that's very much product driven. And that's a great headline because it tells us what we do and the unique service that we provide to our clients. However, it's a very product driven headline. Then when you flip it and you have a headline that then talks to to the prospect and says something along the phrases of, are you sick and tired of doing your own marketing? Right. And that grabs the attention because most clients are like, yeah, like I hate doing my own marketing. And in just capturing that attention, then you can begin to talk to 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 the prospect about your product potentially. But the most important element of any Copywriting is to ensure that it's prospect driven. Talk to the prospect. Do not talk about your product. Ensure you're communicating to what is important to them, not as what it, not what is important to you or your company, if that makes sense. It's such a small change and shift, but when you figure it out, and it's really quite easy, once you figure it out, you see that it so you see that it is quite easy and you kind of slap yourself for not seeing it any sooner and the tips I can provide to sort of figure out what is your prospect driven copy is to ensure that just talk to your prospects talk to your clients figure out what annoys them and then create a product to then correct that need or then to help them to begin correcting it on their own great stuff that's a really powerful question right there because you did mention the whole big principle of marketing uh, which is the three m's message market and media that a lot of people are quite romantic with the media but as long as your message and your market is the same then you know you can put that and plug that into whatever media is coming in correct correct you then articulated the fact that if you know you know, the needs and wants of your customer better than they actually can, then they trust you to be the person that, um, you know, uh, can service their needs and you know what their pain is. I mean, yeah. obviously we could go on and on, but I know it's a Friday and you're about to, uh, you know, <laughs> die of thirst, man. Uh, it no, could no, no. Be. <laughs> um, just speaking on that note as well, a good sort of quote, I forgot who said it, um, it may have been Jay Abraham, maybe. He said a quote that was, if you can enter the conversation which is already happening inside your prospect's head, then you're always going to win. So what are they saying to themselves? And, you know, it's like, man, I hate doing my own marketing. I don't want to send another landing page out. You know, I don't want to do another stupid ad campaign. Like, what is it that they are saying to themselves in their head? Because when you ask your prospects or your clients, what their problem is that they will tell you what their problem is, but they won't tell you the reason behind the problem. And that's, if you can figure out the reason behind the problem that then drives them, then you're always going to have clients, right? 
And for us, yes, we help our clients to generate customers online very, very easily and very quickly. And that's the problem. But the reason behind the problem is that they hate doing their own marketing. They hate doing landing pages. And it takes up their time from the things that they should be doing, which is closing clients and serving their clients. So when you figure out the reason behind the problem, then you can write copy for days, right? So, wow. Yeah. So focus on copywriting. It's sort of been a very conscious skill set that I've been growing over the last three or four years because I began to see trends in terms of the, it doesn't have to be a flashy campaign. You don't need all these, you know, automations and that. Yes, they help out. But on the front end, you need the actual copy to draw them in and then you can automate the sales process through email marketing, advertising, SEO, all of that. However, all of it comes down to copywriting. What are you saying in the SEO, in the emails, in the advertising, in the automations? Are you doing good copywriting that actually helps to then grow that at a very scalable pace? Great stuff. You know, we're only, um, me and everyone else that's watching this are people that are just starting their business. So we're not going to take up much of your time. Otherwise, we get a bill for this consultation, right? <laughs> um, I'm just going to ask one thing. Obviously, Jamie, I, I know I've been following you online for quite a while. Thank you for always, that, by the way. Yeah, you're always keeping up with trends and things like that. You personally, as now the CEO of um, you know, Mark, Market Titans, how do you ensure that you continuously grow and develop as a digital marketer? That's an excellent question. One thing I, well, it comes down to focusing on principles, of course. However, we actually have a team in house which looks after this for us. And their full time um, task is to read articles, do online courses, and fully look at what's happening. And when we have that team in play and they begin to look at everything, we see that the changes are only small, like they're not huge changes. And just being conscious in what is happening allows us to keep at the sort of forefront of our industry quite, quite easily. So if you can, I would suggest to hire sort of like a research team that's constantly researching inside your industry to ensure that you know you don't get caught up in that and to ensure that you know what's happening as well so you might catch up with that team maybe once a month and say okay so what are the 10 key points that you guys learn from the articles from the YouTube videos from the events etc etc that you've currently been going through and I find that the people we have in play for that role, they really enjoy it because they get paid just to like read yeah. books and to watch like videos, you know, and it's a very cushy position that helps out us because we're not consuming my own time or say anyone else's time reading through articles and sort of that. But if you can get someone to do that work for you, even for two hours every week and have them this, like, you know, chot down the sort of key key points then that is sort of always going to help out now if you can't afford to hire someone then by all means you know make sure you dedicate like at least two hours a week maybe in the mornings before the sort of clients hit and look at you know consuming the 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 sort of trending articles in your industry or even if you can go to four events per year and you know spend two or three days there locked in the sort of point is that you don't want to always be chasing the trends because you'll be forever going around and around. You want to be strategically looking at them and then pulling a way to actually execute. So if you do four events per year, whereby you might go to four training events inside your industry, you're locked in and you commit to those new plans or new or new tactics for you know, three or four months, and then you go to another event, right? So ensure that you're consuming and then executing, not that you're always consuming, otherwise you're not going to get any work done, unless you have a team in sort of place for that. All right, okay. So this, this has been very informative, and I should think it's way up there amongst all the interviews we've done, and considering it's a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> 
considering it's a Friday, I really do appreciate you for your time. But you did promise us one thing, though, at the beginning of the show. You did mention you were going to tell us about your clothing company. What happened? Okay. Sure. So, okay. So I was about 18, 19. So I had a design agency and this was just after I had launched it and I figured out, I didn't, I didn't figure out, but I learned how to generate customers online and through a weird series of events and connections and ideas, I felt like launching a clothing company. So I did launch that. And I had it for about two years, push it into clothing shops and retail outlets. It did actually quite well here. And then I sold it. Um, and then I closed it down quietly because I outgrew it creatively. And I've kind of held on to it in terms of the... <laughs> yeah. So then, so then I kind of held on to the brand name and I held on to the IP for the last four years. And then last last month or january i actually sold that company so that was um pretty pretty cool so that was just kind of a sort of creative um journey that i pursued and it's interesting because it taught me a lot of um tangible skills that i now apply to this company and to my clients and the most important thing is that just because you have two companies say a design agency and a clothing company yes you're working more but your income is usually evenly split whereby if you were to close down company a and and then only go in all in on the other company you will find that your income is the exact same and that you're working less and that things are easier and that comes all down to focusing on the one thing like for me i've only been doing the agency for the last 14 months full time and things are pretty easy. Like the income is reasonably good. The clients are really good, you know, and things are easy because I'm only trying to handle one problem, one challenge, as opposed to going, well, I've got the clothing coming and I have my training brand. I have this other thing. And yes, I still do consulting. Yes, I still get paid to sort of, you know, to, to then do keynotes and that. But that's a side hustle that I don't push actively and that I'm not trying to, to, to like sort of grow. So focus on your one thing and ask yourself, what could happen if you went all in on one project every single day? So you went beyond what was required of you every single day. You conquered your insecurities, your sort of fear, and you pushed it every single day, 18 hours a day, and you went in 100%. What would happen? And when you look at it from that point of view, you sort of begin to ask yourself, well, are you actively, you know, putting in the work every day that sort of would, would, would lead you to the desirable outcome? And in most cases, the answer is no. I mean, I can still look at my schedule every week and I might, I might be spending two or three or even four hours on things that aren't really important. And when you try to go all in, it is exhausting, but it's rewarding because you know at the end it will ultimately pay off as well. So go all in on the single tangible outcome on your single project that is linked towards a single prospect with a single outcome and try to streamline all of that and life just gets a lot easier and you have new challenges that you haven't had before appear. Wow, that's that my man is, like I said, you went all out. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, and, and if you guys have been watching this, this has been one of the most informative um, episodes here. And we'd like, I'd like you to help me thank Jamie here, who's taken our time from his uh, thank Friday. Thank you very much. He could have been out there drinking a uh, beer. Oh, no, no. <laughs> working, working. <laughs> Yeah. Right, so we obviously now know one thing, zero in on that one particular thing that would lead you to get to wherever you uh, aspire to with your business. Thank you so much for watching and thank you, Jamie, for tuning in with us. Thank you very much for having me. I'll see you guys next time. Great stuff. Until the next episode, good luck. <laughs>